In this activity, I'm asking you to design your own new wooden toy vehicle using everything that we did in the front end loader as inspiration. This activity is not only asking you to design the vehicle, but try to design the vehicle around a specific set of constraints. Some of the constraints are the materials that you have available to you, which you can see on your screen right now. I have a one and a half by one and a half thick stock. I've got three quarter, half inch, quarter inch stock, and then I've got two dowel rods that I can try to make all the pieces for my vehicle out of. You're also being constrained by the different pieces of machinery and equipment you have available to try to cut that stock up into the pieces that you need. So not only is designing the vehicle hard enough, but trying to make that design fit that specific set of constraints is going to add a whole other level of difficulty to it, and trying to figure out where to start can be a little bit overwhelming. So for the rest of this video, I'd like to do a demo for you on where you might get started on trying to design your vehicle. Okay, so I've gone to the internet and I've tried to go get some inspiration. And this truck that you see right now is the design that I would like to try to use as inspiration for my specific vehicle. But looking at this vehicle, there's no dimensions. There's nothing that tells me how tall things should be, how wide, how thick, and so on. So what I want to do is try to look at thicknesses first. And I can see right now that this fender is probably a pretty good place to start. I want to try to decide how thick I might make that fender. Regardless of the height and width, I'm just going to concern myself with thickness so far. So if I look back at my stocks, I have the one and a half, the three quarter, the half inch, and the quarter. But before I can decide what material thickness I want to make it out of, I have to be able to compare it to something else. Since I have multiple different pieces of material to use, I could really use any of them right now if I don't try to think about how the other pieces are going to get created. So let's think about the bottom of the truck. If I try to compare the fender to what we would consider to be the chassis or the underneath of the truck, I can see that the underneath of the truck was going to be made out of a thinner piece. Um, so right now the fender's made out of a thick piece and the bottom of it's made out of something that's thinner than that. Was there anything else I can compare something to? Well, how about the back of the truck? It looks like the back of the truck is even thinner yet. So the green part is my thick piece, the red's thinner than that, and the blue is even thinner than that. So right now I'm going to go with a theory that my green is going to be my three-quarter inch pieces. So anything that appears to be that size is just going to be 0.75 or three-quarters thick. Everything that appears to be the same thickness as the red is all going to be my half-inch pieces, and then the blue is going to be my quarter-inch. Is there anywhere I might use the one and a half by one and a half? I might use that for the hood, or I might use that for the pieces underneath the vehicle that the axles actually go through. Okay, so now I know how thick I might like to make the materials, but how am I going to determine how tall and how wide the pieces are supposed to be? Well, one of your other constraints is that you have to reuse the wheels that we used in the front end loader. Knowing the diameter of those wheels should really help me proportionately figure out how wide and how tall everything else should be. I know right now that the wheels have a 2 inch diameter and I'm going to use that as inspiration for the rest of my design. So, I'm going to hop over to my engineering notebook and see if I can't start trying to sketch some things out. Alright, so where do we get started? I know that the wheel is a 2 inch diameter and I know that each box in my notebook, each large box in my notebook is an inch. So that must mean that two full boxes wide and tall, um, that that's going to be my wheel's diameter. And then I got to decide where does the front wheel go from there proportionately. Um, so maybe it goes here. Okay, great. So now that I've got my wheels where I want them to be, I've got to think about the axles. Well, the axles are supposed to be 3 eighths of an inch. Um, well, that's a half an inch. So two boxes and a half inch, and 3 eighths is just a little bit smaller than that. So it looks like my axles are going to be somewhere in here. Okay, so now that I've got the basics of the wheel done, I can go ahead and start looking at the rest of the vehicle. Alright, so I've got a half inch block that goes underneath the vehicle. 
So I'm going to kind of start that out here. And maybe it comes to about here. So I can say right now that that's my chassis. So we decided it was going to be a half an inch thick. And then how long is it going to be? Well, because I'm drawing this full scale, I'm now one inch, two inch, three and a half inches. So hopefully you get the idea of that's the proportions. Once I've drawn out the wheels and I know how thick I want the material, drawing it out full scale here is going to start providing me the rest of the dimensions that I don't know. Okay, so let's hop into the fender. So I know this is going to be the 3 quarter inch thick, but that's into my paper. So it's going to be 3 quarter of an inch extrusion, but that's the thickness. So it looks like I'm about an inch tall right now. And then it looks like I may want about a quarter of an inch or so from the wheel to my fender well. Um, I am going to make that arc concentric to the circle so that those two share the same center point. Um, so all I'm going to do is focus on about a quarter of an inch distance from the wheel to my fender. And then I've got the back of the cab. That was our thinnest piece, or our quarter inch piece. So I've got a quarter inch wide piece, and it looks like right now I'm one, two, three inches tall. So again, sketching this out is providing me the missing dimensions that I don't already have. Well, let's see if we can't finish out some more of it. Great, and that may be everything that I need. So I'm going to use some half inch pieces for the chassis. I'm going to use a half inch piece here for my window well, a half inch piece for my top, quarter inch piece for the back, and three quarter inch piece for this fender. And everything looks good proportionally to the wheel itself. You may find that your paper is not big enough. You may find that as you draw this out, there's actually not enough room for me to put these wheels on here. As I start trying to sketch out the bed of it, I may decide that there's not enough room to draw everything that I have here. If that's the case, what you may have to do is scale everything. I may have to draw everything at a different scale. I'm going to go ahead and draw everything at half scale. So instead of these being 2 inch wheels, they're going to end up proportionately being a 1 inch wheel. So that means everything that I'm drawing is going to get cut in half, or doubled when I go to put it in the software. Either way, let's look at that. So now instead of having 2 inch diameter wheels, visually on my paper I'm shrinking it just so that it'll fit and now my wheels are only 1 inch wheels and then I can kind of go from there. So everything that was a half an inch is now a quarter inch, everything that was a quarter inch is now an eighth of an inch and so on. Great, now that I've got everything drawn out, all I'd have to do is double all the dimensions that I have from my paper to go into the software. But what you may find is the new 3D modeling software packages that we currently have are really making the art of trying to sketch things out by hand a little old. I can now start doing my 2D sketches directly in the software and I can see the proportions a lot easier there and get dimensions a lot more specific and not have to worry about scale at all. So let's do that. So instead of drawing it in my notebook, which you can do if you want, I'm just going to draw it directly in Onshape. I'm going to let Onshape help me out. But I'm going to start off in the exact same way. I'm going to start off with a wheel locked into place. I'm then going to go ahead and put on my other wheel and get it where I want it to be and then start designing everything else from there. So let's hop over to Onshape and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So now that I'm in Onshape, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did on paper. I'm going to go ahead and assign where my sketch is going to live. I'm going to go ahead and draw the front wheel 
with a 2 inch diameter. I'll go ahead and throw an axle on there with the 3 8 diameter and then I'm going to put on my next wheel. So I am going to bring my mouse over until I can get that orange dotted line. And then as I start coming out that'll make those two wheels automatically level with each other. Now visually I get to just drag the wheel until I like what I see. It's much easier to do that than to constantly keep scribbling out on my paper where the wheel is going to be and constantly erasing it. So I can keep dragging this around until I'm happy proportionately with how far those wheels are from each other. But then how far are they from each other? Well grab your dimension tool and put a dimension on them. So it looks right now like I'm 6.595 something or other. Don't leave your dimensions like that, especially because this stuff is made out of wood. I can't have that type of precision anyways. So it looks like I'm pretty close to six and a half. And when I hit enter, the wheel moved a little bit, but not enough that I don't like the proportions anymore. It's my design. It's whatever numbers I want to use. And I would encourage you to try to keep things within even eighths of an inch. Most rulers or tape measures that we would use for woodworking don't have dimensions smaller than a sixteenth of an inch anyways. And to try to keep things simple as far as the manufacturing of it, I'm going to try to keep things within eighths of an inch. So six and a half looks good. If I don't like it, then I can change it later without having to erase and redesign things. I can just change that dimension. So let's see if we can't do the rest of it. Okay, excellent. There are a few dimensions that I can go ahead and put on right away. I know that this bottom was going to be a half an inch. I know that all of these were going to be a half an inch. The back was going to be my quarter inch. And now any dimension that I put on from here is just going to be close to whatever I like. Well, I like this window to be about a square. So as I drag this around, draw it and drag it around until you see proportionately exactly what you want it to be. Then just start throwing on dimensions. It looks like that's awful close to two inches. So I'll make it two inches. And as a reminder, how do I know when I'm done? How do I know when I've put on enough dimensions? Well, that's when everything turns black. When everything turns black, that means you have enough dimensions. So what dimensions am I missing right now? Well, some of them are going to be, where is the body actually located in proportion to the wheel? I haven't assigned that yet. Okay, great. Now I have some of what I've drawn starting to turn black. And anything that's still a blue circle or a blue... Um, and anything that's still just a blue dot, grab it and wiggle it. Okay, so it needs to know how long I want the cab to be. Great, and now everything is turned black. I now have proportionately sketched all of my parts in the 3D modeling software. And anything I'm not happy with, I can come in here and I can start tweaking or changing until I am happy with it. It makes it a lot easier than trying to sketch things out in a notebook where I have to constantly keep erasing things and trying to resketch them and clean them up until I get what I want. Okay, great. Well, where do I go from here? Well, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the fender right now, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude just the fender. The one thing that I forgot to put on there is I forgot to put that extra arc on there that gets my fender away from the wheel. If you remember when I actually hand sketched it out, I said I'd like it to be about a quarter of an inch. Well, if I've drawn that right now, let's see what I actually have. So I really don't have quite a quarter of an inch. I'm somewhere in between them. So let's see what the quarter inch actually looks like. So I'm not unhappy with that. So realistically, from what I drew on the paper to what I've now drawn in the software, those were actually pretty close to each other. Okay, so again, let's focus on just the fender. I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude, and I'm going to pick the fender. For this example, I'm going to go into the screen. And I know that we decided that the green parts were going to be 3 quarters of an inch. Okay, excellent. So that is my fender. I can now go ahead and save that as the fender and start on the rest of the pieces. But 
man, that seems like I put a lot of work into that sketch that I'm going to have to redo every time I want to draw another piece. Well, you can actually borrow it. I can highlight everything. I can right click and copy it and I can paste that sketch into another file. But what I would like to show you is one of the things that most 3D modeling software packages now have the capability to do, which is model all of the pieces in one file. So not only is this file going to maintain or contain my fender, it's going to hold most, if not all, of my pieces. I'm going to turn this sketch back on, and right now I'm just going to focus on the back of the cab. But as I do that right now, it actually combined those into one piece. So my fender and my back are one piece. I'm not going to be able to separate them out so I can assemble them and see one piece at a time. Back in the extrusion, you have the option for new. And as I do that, it'll actually create an entire new solid. So I'll have the fender as one piece and the back as an entirely separate part. And then I can do the same thing with the windows and the chassis. Instead of extruding this a specific distance like I did the back, I've already defined the width of my vehicle. I'm now going to change it from blind and I'm going to say up to face and click on this one. So now later on if I actually want to change the back then the top will change too. But unfortunately you can see that they're both the same color now. They both became gray so it joined those two together rather than creating a new shape. So make sure that you always click on new if you want it to be a new shape rather than adding to an existing one. Excellent, so I now have all of these individual pieces all living in the same file. So not only is it going to make it easier to model, but it also makes it easier to edit. If I decide here in the future that I don't like the height of this, if I go back into my original sketch and I edit that 2.5 to maybe something like 2.75, when I finish that sketch, it not only did it update the back of the cab, it also updated this window frame because they all live in the same file. That wouldn't happen if I created everything as separate files. I'd have to go in and edit them all individually. Not only can most 3D modeling software packages add new parts, you can also typically cut on existing parts. So since my sketch actually lived on this piece, when I go to cut it right now, I can cut just that piece and not cut the other pieces. But I can change that from blind to a specific thickness as I want to. So I'm going to change that from blind to just up to this top face. So it's the same thing as a cut all because if this face changes, then those will too. Um, but because my sketch actually lived on that part, it didn't cut the individual parts anyways. Okay, so what I want to show you is I'm not actually going to make this fender in this window again. Those pieces already exist. They're all down here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start renaming them so I know what they are when I go into the assembly. So all I have to do is right click and go to rename. That was my fender. Because I can bring things in multiple times into the assembly, once I go into the assembly and I go to insert, I can now see all the pieces that I have, but I can also just click on this top one and it'll grab them all. So now that I've got them, I can go ahead and insert a second fender and I can go ahead and insert another window frame. And I can build everything from there. Same thing, I can go back to my other documents, go back to where my original parts live so I can go ahead and reborrow the wheel and the axles or anything else that I want to use. So hopefully this demo has given you an idea of where to start, how to try to start sketching with proportions and changing those into dimensions that you're happy with, and you can use this demonstration in the creation of your vehicle. Good luck!